elephants are uh, facing a number of uh, protection problems and if you look at uh, the conservation issues of elephants major challenge before the uh, wildlife authorities or wildlife managers and the uh, conservation organization is tackling the problem of elephant human conflict this is the major problem currently faced because you know this is affecting the people and there is a very possibility that the people can turn against conservation if they are affected adversely now what is the definition of a uh, uh, human wildlife conflict or uh, wildlife uh, human conflict any any interaction normally we say that you know the interaction used to be very friendly and we expect that you know all the interaction will be positive but it can turn into negative interaction when there is a negative impact on social economic or cultural life of humans and even on the wildlife so the the impact could be both on the people and wildlife so but unfortunately normally we don't consider any negative impact on wildlife as a conflict so our uh, we always try to highlight the problems faced by the people as the the uh, conflict uh, situation now is this a re recent phenomenon normally people say that oh it has never been there it has started only recently but if you look at uh, the old literature pertaining to any region let's say gazetteers or uh, ecological history or history books of uh, the particular region definitely we will see that it is not of uh, recent origin so for example this is of course you not know, taken from the kerala situation where uh, in 1888 that time the ruler uh, they had uh, uh, made a proclamation they have uh, released a proclamation saying that you know whoever is cultivating inside the forest or the areas do, i mean given by given to them for cultivation should not abandon the area and uh, at the same time they can get all the uh, arms and ammunition to scare away the animals uh, from the uh, area uh, so it can be obtained by the from the government offices so it was there in 1818 so that is an important information now the if you look at uh, uh, another literature pertaining to uh, the high ranges in the western ghats you know the the kerala part of the western ghats there uh, bodilon in one of his books you know he is mentioning about uh, the the crops in 1892 this was published in 1892 the crops too are often entirely destroyed by wild animals but he says that you know this everything is against the system of hill cultivation and he is actually attributing the problem of uh, this so called conflict to the cultivation in such areas in in the areas you know where uh, elephants have been uh, there now another uh, important document again from kerala situation is about uh, the uh, the report uh, written by one francis who has been traveling in the 1900s uh, traveling from uh, Calicut to Nilgiris, he has written that you know the Vainad is uh, that is adjacent to Mudumalai and Bandipura is dotted with the machans. You know, machans are the raised platform from where uh, the people used to scare away the uh, wildlife from the cultivation. And so this is interesting. Again, so that means you know it is not a recent origin. It is there. It has been there. The only problem is, you know, there has been some change now in the attitude of the people and also in the behavior of the wildlife. Now, how serious is the situation? We have some statistics to say the, the extent and nature of the conflict. These are the uh, uh, replay. These are from the replay given to given by the Honorable Minister of MOHCC in 2016. Of course, and it is outdated, but still, I think, you know, it is relevant that human death by elephants for, for, from 2009 10 to 2016 is uh, 2804 so it is definitely uh, serious and you know we had the highest number of uh, people uh, uh, killed in 2012 13 and that was in west bengal we had the highest number so if you look at all these figures you know definitely the the issue is there and there is no point in saying that no this is uh, this i mean by attributing this to the people or their cultivation practices or something else but it is it's a fact that you know the the conflict situation is a major challenge to be tackled 
Now, why do we have such a conflict situation? Or why uh, the, the positive interaction turned to the negative interaction uh, leading to the conflict situation? Now, if you look at uh, most of the uh, uh, areas, you know, where you have uh, conflict uh, reports are coming are uh, mostly from human dominated landscapes where the uh, there is an overlapping of uh, uh, habitat, overlapping use of habitat by both by, by the people and the animals. So the resources, this this uh, overlapping uh, use of this habitat is for the resources and when the, the when a situation comes you know the resources are becoming mega and the animals and the people are utilizing the same resources there is a competition and there comes the conflict so in such situation definitely there is going to be a problem so this is uh, what we call inevitable in such situations especially in human dominated landscapes say this is the human dominated landscapes so uh, these are the this is the situation in some of the places in uh, either in even in uh, uh, northeast or in central india i mean in the eastern part of uh, uh, india or uh, even in some parts of uh, uh, south india so wherever we go wherever we have the problems very severe problems of human wildlife conflict or human elephant conflict we have the situation uh, which is where you know the people dominated landscape is uh, present because you know we have lost the habitat uh, of elephants and whatever is remaining are uh, fragments and uh, there are issues of uh, change in the land use so this is a good example from the high rangers in one of the part of uh, in kerala uh, which is uh, devikulam where you can see that in 1975 this was a situation uh, this is a situation in 1975 Whereas, you know, if you look in 19, by 1995, the green, the green part is coming less and less and ultimately it becomes fragmented. And whereas the cultivation, the crops, the plantations and everything is going on increasing. In addition to this, you have the developmental programs also like resorts and other things coming up. So basically, the change in the land use and the shrinkage of habitat is the major issue uh, that leads to uh, conflict. There is always uh, a saying, I mean, especially the people complain that, you know, there is, uh, not, uh, there is a food shortage in the forest and that is why the elephants are coming out. Uh, and there is a water scarcity, that is why the elephants are coming out. But our records and, you know, the records of the forest department indicate that most of these are happening when there is enough rains and there is enough other resources in the, in the forest. Well, but the, the question is, but these are the seasons you know when you have the cultivations also so most of these uh, problems are during the cultivation time or when the uh, crops are ripe so, which attract uh, the elephants and uh, there is a definitely there is a decrease in tolerance of crop riding animals you know the, the people have changed and all the social changes happening in the society is definitely reflected among the people who are affected and the crop guarding has uh, has uh, decreased uh, because you know the, there is not manpower to go for uh, such uh, crop guarding or chasing the animals or guarding at night and there is no communal planting or uh, communal guarding of uh, the uh, crops or the cultivated areas so this has also uh, led to an increase in the in the cultivation in the in the conflict situations now another issue is as i mentioned earlier no there is a possibility that you know the because of the conflict uh, because of the human dominated landscape because of the fragmentation of the habitat and because uh, the the uh, resource poor habitats are increasing now uh, because of the degradation of the habitat there could be a problem where uh, the uh, elephants are displaced and then come to depend on crop crops for uh, survival so this is another thing and from africa there is a record there are the studies in africa say that intense culling or hunting or uh, or you call poaching is definitely affecting uh, the uh, the elephant population for, to form larger groups and then causing greater damage to vegetations and ultimately to the crops also now there is another uh, argument that you know the increase there is an increase in the wild animal numbers especially elephants 
uh, uh, around the protected areas or even in the reserve forests. So, but we don't have any any proof to say these things. And probably, I would say that it is left to the communities, you know, the scientific communities who are studying the elephants to look at the 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 numbers obtained or the density figures obtained uh, through a normal population estimation and uh, work for uh, population uh, estimation of the contiguous areas. So that will give us an idea whether there is going to be there is uh, uh, the conflict situation is because of the increase in the uh, wild animal numbers. But as uh, as I mentioned earlier, if you look at uh, the records of the Bordelon in 1892, he has mentioned about these things. And you know that time also people argued that you know there is an increase in the population of elephants. But he says that that cultivation is yearly extending. And we can well understand that elephants are much more troublesome now than formerly without there being any increase in their numbers. So he's actually attributing to the increased uh, uh, cultivation, uh, bringing a uh, more areas, uh, more forest areas, or more elephant habitats under cultivation as one of the major reasons, you know, for uh, for uh, uh, increased conflict situation. But not the number has increased, and uh, most of the areas, you know, the, there is an alternate alteration of the habitat, alteration of the elephant habitat, uh, and especially in the in the uh, corridor areas, you know, where the connectivity is lost. And this is mostly for urbanization or for other developmental activities like uh, linear infrastructure or uh, uh, like uh, roads or uh, rails. So the, the issue is becoming more serious when there is going to be more developmental activities within and uh, outside the elephant, the fringe of the elephant habitat. And uh, as, you, as we mentioned about the land use change, in most of the areas, you know, if you look at uh, uh, the uh, policy, decisions of the government or the the decision makers in the in the top of the uh, administration there used to be no concern raised you know so people are wherever i said this is a good example again from kerala where elephant habitat uh, which has been I mean, the habitat which has been used by elephants have been uh, alerted to people and the people were allowed to settle there and they were given title deed so increasing the the possibility of uh, closer interaction leading to more number of conflict uh, incidences. As I mentioned, loss of connectivity. So the traditional migration routes are uh, uh, lost and then leading to creation of corridors, you know, which is a narrow connecting link. This is very severe in certain places. Of course, not much in uh, South India. I would say that, you know, it is actually uh, the number of uh corridors indicate the the severity of the fragmentation situation said so this was done by the right of passage by the wildlife trust of india published this book uh with the help of uh with the approval of the ministry of environment forest and climate change and you know we have seen that you know the the the, the northwest bengal is the worst situation but uh, the situation is not similar even in odisha or jharkhand that uh, eastern delhi i mean eastern India patches or even in the Northeast. So this means that, you know, this could lead to major problems. So ultimately leading to a securing of uh, elephant corridors are very, very crucial. Now the other issue as we, we are definitely going for more and more areas bringing under ecotourism. So ecotourism society defines ecotourism as purposeful travel to natural areas. But unfortunately, we don't bother much and we even go for provoking the animals and changing or uh, leading to a change in the behavior of the animals. So this is going to be very, very uh, serious situation. So our ecotourism policy and uh, the management of ecotourism is also very, very, very crucial. Now, if you look at the behavior of the animals, the behavior of elephants, you know, they, they tend to, the males tend to leave the herd and form bachelor herds. So wherever there is a bachelor herd, you know, the hierarchy is different and you have the the experienced adult bull as the leader of that particular herd uh, unlike uh, the the matriarchal system in the herd in the elephant herd and then the elephant family so here there is an issue and you know normally where there is there are a lot of complaints received by the forest department and others that you know it is the bachelor herds you know which are creating problem and often this hierarchy or these bachelor herds are completely dismantled by capturing the the adult bull, you know, who is uh, uh, 
who is the leader and who 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 is actually teaching the youngsters you know how to raid and uh, what to do so all those issues now if you look at the people who are affected the basically it is the farmers who are really affected they lose the crop and they lose uh, sometimes the property and you know the complete economy is in uh, trouble so that is and you know people now sometimes say that okay let us go for a change in the crops no which is not acceptable because you know you cannot think of a change of crops you know which is definitely affecting the food security so how to overcome these things you know that's a major uh, challenge before the conservation world now uh, there was another study by jadav and barwa though brief uh, they have conducted a study normally we say that you know, there has been some problem and there is a loss of crops and there is a loss to, there, there is damage to the property but they are talking about uh, another situation the psychiatric and social pathological situations because of these uh, problems because of the the impact of conflict on the mental health of the people i think this is also crucial which is never accounted uh, in any any in a, in any uh, decision making so i think you know this is something which has to be looked into and maybe more studies are required to understand what is happening to the people and it's not just the people you know sometimes the affected people also go for retaliation and leading to uh, either to injury of the elephants or even sometimes killing of the elephants and uh, uh, the poisoning of the elephants and then electrocution of the elephants so the and country bombs are also being used by certain people uh, to uh, get rid of the the problematic animal so this is a definitely a new situation where it's not just the people but the wildlife is also affected and another challenge before us is the to manage the new elephant areas you know like uh, this is of course you know from the karnataka to maharashtra elephants moved but we have other situations like uh, elephants have now moved from other areas to madhya pradesh and uh, there is a resident population there now uh, and we have the situation in chatisgarh and we have the situation in parts of west bengal we have the problems in uh, uh, assam and we have the problems in uh, uh, andhra pradesh so we are and even in kerala now we have the problems because the elephants uh, at least a few of the bulls have started uh, i mean they had uh, uh, migrated or uh, moved from the uh, forest areas through uh, cultivations and through uh, human dominated areas to other areas so this is a major challenge i think uh, somebody has to look into the issue why do they go for such a change and why do they come back uh, come come back even after 100 years you know they had come to chatisgarh and even after 200 or 300 years they have come to, come i mean 200 years or so they have come back to uh, madhya pradesh so this is another challenge you know faced by these people and which leads to further issues because people are not aware of uh, the the elephant behavior and they don't know how to tackle with the situation now we have also gone for a lot of mitigation strategies but it is important to look at the efficacy of the mitigation strategies unfortunately most of these strategies have been copied most of the our mitigation uh, measures are copied from elsewhere mostly from africa uh, but it is important to take uh, uh, the, some factors into consideration like the habitat the uh, the daytime refuges uh, for elephants and uh, distribution of water human settlement patterns physical defenses and cultural and agricultural practices and you know so many such factors site specific factors are there which definitely need to look into the uh, see when you say that you know these are the the barriers or watches uh, to chase away the animals rapid response teams as as gracia payment of as gracia which people normally uh, wrongly call it as compensation or relocation of habitat or uh, awareness programs or interaction with uh, elected representatives or uh, media so all these uh, possibilities are there or capture of uh, the problematic animals or uh, forming jana jagrata samitis as we have done it in kerala so but the situation could be different and the the these mitigation measures should be site specific and cost effective and socially acceptable so we will come to that uh, thing again that uh, problems again or that uh, important matter again now this is the traditional guarding race from race to platforms which we normally call as machan which is considered to be the best but we don't have 
time. We cannot go ask the farmers to go for cultivation during daytime and then go for night watching or night guarding uh, from these uh, platforms. So naturally, uh, the number of uh, such platforms are coming less and less. Uh, fire torches, uh, but there was also an attempt to use, you know, this uh, used uh, CDs, uh, compact discs in Thailand, which which failed. And the chasing, which is definitely dangerous uh, for both the people, and sometimes you know this could lead to uh, human death. And the trained captive elephants, or what we call kunkis, of course, you know this gives a lot of confidence to the people who are engaged in chasing the animal away from the uh, problem areas. But uh, this can be done only in smaller areas. You know, you cannot think of uh, kunkis. I mean, employing kunkis in all the places wherever there is uh, issues. So in that way, it is inefficient and it is inappropriate. But at the same time, it is important to have uh, give a lot of con. This gives a lot of confidence to the people that okay, the the, uh, the wildlife managers are taking some effective measures. Dung and chili smog has been used in uh, Indonesia, but it depend a lot depends on the the wind direction. And uh, in some places, especially in Kerala, we had gone for a gave a zero fight, you know, for as biofencing. And uh, but in most of the places it has failed, at least for elephants, because you know, elephants have started. Uh, uh, people have uh, mentioned or people have observed elephants uh, feeding on this agave itself. And then there was an out of box suggestion uh, by somebody uh, from an institution saying that you know salaka could be used, but uh, we found that you no know, salaka is uh, because of the thorny situation. But we found that salaka is uh, the food of elephants in. Myanmar and other places and uh, moreover this can attract uh, more of uh, most of the other herbivores also because of the the fleshy fruits of this salaka elephant trough, uh, proof trench which we uh, normally call EPT but heavy investment and this used to be the slogan or this used to be the demand of the people in the beginning that we should have and that was uh, that was the time you know when there was uh, uh, also a possibility of giving a lot of employment to the local uh, people but Later, it is machines. So naturally, uh, there is no employment generation because of uh, going for trenches. And moreover, trenches, uh, there are issues, you know, because uh, at least uh, some observation by a soil conservation officer in one of the uh, Kerala soil conservation officer, he mentions that this is actually cutting uh, the, the soil, I mean, the water, the drainage pattern of the area. And, you know, we are losing most of the first order streams. And the water is also coming, getting accumulated in these areas, and it is being taken away from the location. So that means, you know, the the, uh, the soil moisture condition of that area will be affected. So, and this is, of course, you know, this is another issue that elephants overcome such uh, all barriers, and they learn, they adapt to the situation. Alternative water sources in some places because of the drought situation. You know, sometimes it definitely helps, but uh, we don't have any proper record of it. Whether it is uh, the water holes uh, created for the animals are being used or not, uh, whether it has helped the animals to go for a uh, when we so that you know all the water spread uh, water uh, uh, sources created is definitely whether it is helping the to have a, a even distribution of animals. So we don't have any data to support it. Solar power fence is considered to be technologically effective. And you know, if it is installed properly and if it is maintained properly, this is uh, this is the best. Uh, but the problem is, you know, deficiencies are always because of the weakest or weak institutional arrangements to do with the contracts, wages, work schedules, disputes, and it's not a technological shortcoming. And People never go for maintaining it. The beneficiaries, they are not uh, really, uh, I mean, once the government or once the institution is installing that, and the people should take care of it, its maintenance, but it doesn't happen. And in, in most of the places, at least whenever there is a private party going for installing the, such uh, uh, barriers, it may not be at the right place. And this can lead to, this may prevent the normal animal movement path and the animal will be uh, diverted. Animal has will be forced to go to take another route to reach the other areas, which can uh, definitely lead to further conflict in that area. This is a good example where 
these are the the electric fences are there you know the all these electric fences are in a haphazard way so it has not uh, all these uh, private electric fences so we don't have any control over that so i think you know, it is very important to have a control or uh, and you know maybe a sort of uh, permission uh, and you know we have to look at uh, whether the locations for such barriers are not leading to we have to see that you no know, it doesn't lead to further conflict situations and the elephant as usual can learn i mean the, the uh, learning ability of the animals also have to be considered so if you look at this you know definitely they are breaking open the the conflict i mean the solapa fence using the tusk and you know here also you know the the spike the iron pillars with the spike that is being damaged by the elephants and it is never maintained once installed you know they forget it and it, it it's not even properly installed if you can look at uh, the the way it is being installed so this is a situation in most of the places and uh, we are going for a more number of uh, barriers like uh, a trench and then we have the solar power fence along with that and sometimes you know even the walls are also there in some places and the latest trend is solar hanging fence which is found to be very effective because the elephants cannot reach and damage the uh, the fence as we have uh, in the normal solar power fence as such so hanging is uh, something which is which could be tried and wherever it has been tried you know it is found to be better and more effective than the normal fencing so i think you know probably this is one of the things and wherever private fences have been installed you know it is very good it is well maintained and well installed and there is not much problem it works effectively and this is the one you know which i had been mentioning iron pillars with the spikes this is more damaging to the animal and this doesn't stop the elephants you know from crossing this situation so and the the latest trend is to go for rail fence the what we call armstrong fence in, in fact it was armstrong who had gone for uh, installing such barrier in addo national park long back and he found that it is economically not viable so he left it there but we have now copied it uh, and now we have go, started installing it but again if not properly installed you know the elephants can definitely cross it and sometimes it damages if it is not properly done it damages and more than that the cost wise you know it is about 1.5 crore per kilometer which is again if you look at the principle of uh, conflict mitigation it should be cost effective but this is not cost effective compared uh, it is something like uh, 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 five times or uh, four times higher than the solar power fences and uh, this is another steel barrier or steel ropes which is uh, developed by uh, an Australian conservator forest in uh, kerala uh, forest department and which i call it as nagaraj model now because he has developed it and it is found to be very effective in such areas but again uh, wherever there is a flood and other problems you know naturally there is a maintenance issue is there elephant proof wall and elephant proof wall is again not a solution because it can be damaged by elephants and moreover it's not cost effective because it's again like uh, the the rail fence or the armstrong fence and the impact on environment because you have to get the the granites from elsewhere so there is an impact on the environment elsewhere and we have to go for quarrying the granites and then bringing it here so the environmental cost also has to be taken into account when we go for such barriers the siren sound making device i have seen this in sri lanka and it is working very effectively unfortunately we haven't tried with all these electronic devices our electronic engineers available we are ready to do this and we are ready to make an attempt sound scaring mechanisms are failing because you know the elephants get used to that some people use the try the tiger roaring sound and replaying it but it also didn't help and you know because the the tiger is a part of the system so elephants are not much bothered there have been again we had copied this from kenya uh, and you know uh, the dr lucy king this uh, leader of the elephant uh, and bees project so it failed in indonesia it failed in uh, sri lanka and it failed in kerala and in some places wherever people claim that it has been a success it has been supported it has been uh, supplemented by uh, a line of uh, solar power fence also uh, but this attracts in our uh, environment this attracts uh, sloth bear also to this uh, situation so may not be 
a very good uh, solution for our uh, situation or our uh, environment so that is also very very important now another thing is uh, this uh, lucy king you know tried uh, and uh, they came to uh, sri lanka and they tried all these things and then ultimately failed and they said you know even without with all this failure honey is good for health but that is not our uh, important thing and people talk about alternate crops or decoy crops as buffer or medicinal and aromatic plants so they tried it in nepal and in hassan one of my friends in ashin part you know hassan chili was planted but elephants pla elephants trampled and destroyed these so ultimately leading to uh, but again this cannot be uh, considered as something you know which will add to our food security so we cannot change all our paddy field to for such crops or even uh, for the as we have done it in manas uh, you cannot go for lime lemon so that's uh, another issue and chili uh, ropes are being uh, attempted but it failed because of uh, it is not that advisable or it's not it didn't work in our places maybe the one of the best solution for uh, uh, such uh, um, as a conflict mitigation is the voluntary relocation of the people uh, the vinad in kerala kerala forest department had uh, uh, done this and you know they could uh, i think you know they have relocated around uh, four or five settlements already by going for a golden shake hand by giving them allotting them the money so that uh, probably and you know the area is now available for elephants uh, the and it is uh, uh, disturbance free area and moreover these people are also happy and they don't have to worry about the conflict uh, situations and uh, escrisha or benefit sharing uh, or uh, performance payment escrisha is being paid for such uh, uh, damage from the elephants and other wildlife but uh, this cannot be and unfortunately people call it as compensation but this cannot be treated as a, a solution because you know the the mitigation has to be site specific cost effective and socially acceptable this is an attempt uh, done by the uh, in pocket agar so uh, grain for grain because these people are allowing the elephants to cross through their paddy field to walk through their paddy field and the damage and they lose the paddy so naturally people thought of giving them money but they said no we want grain so the loss of grain and this was attempted uh, by the arunachal forest report the pocket tiger reserve authorities along with the the uh, wildlife trust of india who has been working in the corridor area in that area and compensation doesn't uh, definitely uh, it doesn't address the con quantifiable social opportunity cost borne by the affected people the, the time they have to spend day and night in the field and the rapid response team definitely it gives a sort of uh, feeling of security to the people and uh, that that seems to be a good uh, move by the uh, forest department in india in different parts of the country there are suggestions that the problem animal could be captured and sometimes the the attempt is to tran uh, to transfer these elephants or to translocate this elephant from one area to the other one which is definitely uh, transferring the problem to another uh, areas you know which is not good but sometimes definitely the problem component uh, uh, the problem animal once captured could uh, reduce as i mentioned about the bachelor herds you know sometimes it uh, reduces the issue but these space you know utilized by this uh, problematic elephant is never left uh, as vacant and uh, some other animals will definitely come there and we have to see what happens in such uh, situations the scientific community claims that you know we can go for radio coloring and uh, attaching the radio i mean the transmitter on the elephants and which will give us alarm uh, which we can but how many elephants could be uh radio colored because we are not talking about one or two elephants you know creating problem so this is not viable but at the same time this may give us a lot of information on the movement of the animals but it's not going to uh give a warning to the people uh, because you know you cannot uh, uh, go for uh, uh, attaching transmitters to all the males or all the herds in that particular area so this may not be viable and it's not cost effective as such but which will give a lot of uh, academic uh, information scientific information which can be used for management purpose sms alert again site specific this has been wonderfully done by uh, nature Con um, conservation foundation in the uh, in uh, valpare and you know it is said to be very very effective to some extent in the sense you know people will be alerted 
about the presence of the animal in the nearby areas. This, as I have already mentioned, the change of crops cannot be accepted because you cannot ask the people to change the, the uh, food crops uh, uh, from the food crops to something else. You know, that, so there had been suggestions like you know fertility control could be immunocontraception, but it is yet to be standardized. Uh, so it is going to be a problem and habitat manipulations and you know all these things have been and changing the human behavior through awareness programs so all these are proposed and to some extent it is done now what more could be done we have to definitely think in terms of the look addressing the socioeconomic costs associated with the human wildlife conflict uh because you know the perception of the affected people are affected are influenced by these sort of uh, issues which they face day on a daily basis and we should also consider the contribution of the community for the well for, for maintaining these ecosystems and for maintaining this wildlife in their area and the economic and social costs borne by the villages around the protected areas and even in the reserve forest have to be taken into consideration so i think this is the major thing you know which has to be considered and for which we have to go for a discussion for a dialogue with the affected people interaction with the farmers and in kerala we have taken the the forest department had taken the initiative and there were uh, interaction with the elected representatives media and farmers and they have, uh, the uh, the department has formed janajagrata some of these it is again as usual it is effective in some places and in some places because it is the elected representatives, the panchayat people are supposed to be the, the leaders of that Jana uh, Jagrata Samadhi. So they have to take the initiative and they have to think of uh, site specific solutions and they have to think of uh, interaction with the people. So that's the most important thing. So these human dimensions of conservation, because you know, the, the most affected people are the ecosystem people. And the, there we cannot allow to have a change in the tolerance level of these people at least. Uh, there had been instances where uh, uh, the Adivasis in some of these areas in Kerala had protested capture of elephants from an area where the non-Adivasi community had been asking for capture of the elephants from that area. And if you look at the modern concept, the natural resource management, it is known as uh, social value management or social conflict management. So the, the success is actually uh, depending on the social science and human dimensions integration into the overall planning so the managers should be aware and they should be they should be aware and they should deal with the complex social political economic environments this is very crucial for any wildlife manager and even for the for others who are dealing with such situations because without looking at the social complexity without looking at the political complexity and without looking at the economic situation of the people, we cannot think of planning, proper planning. So all these things, again, leading to another issue also, the natural resource degradation, which is normally uh, considered as a major issue for elephants to come for crop riding or uh, uh, for uh, uh, visiting uh, settlements, uh, it cannot be tackled in a, in a, in a, so in a, in a salt um, in, a, in a solitary way it has to be in totality the stress should be on soil water plant animal and man interactions in the system through appropriate policy so our our policy should consider all these aspects and it should be taken considered into uh in totality uh it cannot be in an isolated way no that somebody will look into the soil somebody will look into the water no which has to be integrated and uh, our policy should be integrated ultimate goal of wildlife damage management should be to increase the net benefit of wildlife for society so this can be achieved only through purposeful intervention of the the affected uh, uh, and address the uh, the the uh, the problems of the affected people by the managers and so again coming back to the dialogue with the community so so that you know we can think of we will have the management we will achieve the management objective of long-term conservation of viable populations in larger natural habitats i think this is the ultimate goal when you are talking about the ultimate goal of elephant conservation we are also talking about the ultimate goal of wildlife management 
which should be the that uh, the net benefit of wildlife for society should be ensured thank you so much i am sure that you know i have uh, uh, i was been very fast and you know definitely uh, i have touched only part of it and it can be elaborated all these issues can be further elaborated with examples from all over india thank you so much